This is Morning Express, and well, it's time for us to catch up with a person of interest. And uh, like I'd mentioned earlier, Sophia Wanuna had caught up with the one and only uh, Chris Kirubi. And uh, well, she had uh, this to tell us about him, or rather he had this to say. So Karubi, thank you very much for having us in your beautiful homestead. You're welcome and uh, I hope you enjoy being here. <laughs> we will. A little bit chilly, but the, the tea will keep us warm. Yeah? Right. Yeah? We will. Yes. So you wear many hats and we'll get to the business aspect of it. Um, but let's begin with family because I think that's the most basic in life, right? It is. I... I have two kids and mm -hmm. uh, my son works somewhere in Brussels, he works for DHL, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a global leader there, he's in charge of Europe in what he does. And uh, my daughter is here with me, she does a lot of doubling in business, mm -hmm. she's a director of several companies and mm -hmm. uh, a mother as well, and, you know. I, happen to see her from time to time but yeah. otherwise she's busy she's yes. busy yes. so Chris married been married with me yes I was you are the future I cannot tell how but long were you married Christ for all, uh, that will give you where the future will be so I don't know yeah yes. how long were you married for Several years. Yeah. Several years. Yes, to have two kids and whom I like very much. Yeah. So now Chris is a single man. Chris is a single man. Mm -hmm. Lives in this large compound and uh, hardly sees the compound. He works all the time. Sees it in the morning. Sees it at night. Mm -hmm. I travel pretty long, much and. Uh, my life is a jet set world, yeah. Yeah. Would you tell us some of what, um, perhaps that you remember your memories with your kids growing up, being in that fam you know, family setup where there's wife, there's kids, and this is an ambitious young Kirubi focusing on all of these things, mm -hmm. and how different that is from you know, then to now when the picture has changed, the kids are busy living their own lives, and you're here alone. Um, mm. Uh, it was an interesting life, just looking after kids, going, taking them to school, working with them on their homework and, you know, going shopping and uh, all these manner of things that uh, families do. And, oh. um, it's a good life. I miss it at some time, but uh, it was very busy and uh, you have to be home at a certain time, yes. see the kids before they go to bed. Now I walk up to midnight sometime in the office, nobody is complaining and uh, I come home from travels, mm -hmm. stay one day and pick my bag and off again to another country, another territory because my job needs me to be there. Yeah. Uh, so the two lives are quite challenging if you look at it, when you're looking after family. You have a very big constituency to bring up and mm -hmm. to take care of. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're involved in business and business only, then you have to concentrate in what you have to do. You have to devote yourself to business and what, yeah. create jobs. Now, my family is a wider family. All the people I employ, these are all my families, yes. Yeah. What do you miss about being married, if anything? I think I miss quarrels. <laughs> Is that all? Making okay? up. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? The up and down up of... Up and down of life is uh, it's a bit... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very restrictive, you know. But don't those quarrels also then know. lead to divorce and all? No, divorce is Sometimes. a nasty thing to have to happen, but... Uh, if it has to happen, it's better it happens. So Rather did it happen for you? Miserably married. There are people who are 
totally miserable and unmarried and they never bring out their potential because they just have to live a life that they are not explosive, they're not expressing themselves, they are only focusing on the miseries mm -hmm. they met each other. So I personally think if you have to be free, it's better to be free. So was if it you have to be married, you yeah. have to be happy and they share life with each other. Was it acrimonious for you? I wouldn't say so. I think I was very young. I was very young and I wanted I wanted freedom. I wanted to go out. My wife was very conservative and um, you know, I don't blame her. That's, uh, people are born with different uh, strain in their body, how they can be and how they can behave. So. Mm. We were just maybe not too of a kind. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. What, what value do you place on family as a businessman? Because you know I, I, it centers a person. So for you, what, what's that I value and currency? I think a family is important. I know I have a family myself. Mm. I don't have a wife, but I have a family. True. But to have a family and bring up a happy family is the biggest success one can achieve. But it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. It takes a wife to want to make it a success and a man to make it a success. So Correct. if the two are committed, it works. Yeah. If the two are not committed, it, it can never be a one-way thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a joint effort. You know, after the happy moments of just getting married, you start seeing the real life, what it is all about. Yes. And, that's what I advise young people, is don't just rush Into to marriage. marry the girl you met yesterday. Better know the person, better know their likes, their dislikes, their moods mm. and uh, their ambitions. Because uh, afterwards it all comes out and uh, then, then you have to amazed. deal with it. And so do you have a girlfriend now? Well, I, I don't know how friends. <laughs> I, I, if I, if I, if <laughs> <laughs> you have many friends? No, I wouldn't say so because uh -huh. I'll get into trouble as well. <laughs> so the best thing is to <laughs> best thing is not to answer that I'm, question. I'm, I'm just um, not heavily committed right now. That's You're not heavily committed. Say, yeah. But would you look to get married again if you found this person that, you know? You know, unlike business, life you don't plan it that way yeah business i can plan i'll go into energy i'll go into something else mm -hmm. but um, this marriage thing just he hits on you and uh, sometimes you lose your head and you find yourself heading to church if somebody asks you why you can't even explain you just yeah. say i'm in love so you, you, you never tell. Mm. Never tell. You can't condition love. Yeah. It comes when it does. And, you know. but what do you do for fun? What, what do you do to keep you, other than, of course, your busy schedule with business and all that? What else is uh, Kirubi's life about that keeps mm. you centered and, st centered and still enjoying um, the great life and money? I always tell people I'm always on holiday because I feel my work gives me the pleasure. I work a lot. I work on Sundays. Yeah. I work on Saturdays. I I play golf sometime. I Do you go out? I, Do you dance? I used to a lot. These days when I go out, it becomes a big thing. Everybody is talking about me being there. So it makes <laughs> it becomes a bit restrictive. Yeah. I, I'm limited where I can go mm. without. Uh, becoming a subject matter in that place. So I, I tend to go to friends' homes or friends tend to come to my home. Yeah. And, you know, kind of private parties because uh, I'm a public figure without realizing I am. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest regret, if you have any, so far in your life? Hmm, biggest regret? is that I didn't have the opportunities I have here now when I started business. It's taken me several years to be where I am. And, uh, but that was not I, of your doing. What do you regret of your doing? Something that you did 
and you're like, if I knew better, in hindsight, I'd have done better. Mm. I don't know what I would like to say about that. There are many things that uh, I could do better in, and one of them is I wish I did study accounting because I have to depend on accountants to tell me numbers are telling or numbers are not working. Yes. But to be honest, there are many things one misses in life and uh, one would like to reverse and do them, but uh, on the whole you have to be satisfied with what you have, yeah. what you have achieved. You look at your colleagues, what you've done, what they have done, and uh, you feel that maybe you, you've been lucky. Do you consider yourself a spiritual man? A what? A spiritual man who believes in God, who goes to church. I, what are your on I don't believe going to church makes one spiritual. It is the way you live. It's the beliefs you have. It's your daily actions, your daily behavior, your promises with people. That, that, that's what I believe in. I, I, I may not go much to church very often. But you believe but in I God. Believe, I believe in the Almighty and uh, I know that what I read in the Bible many years back that yeah. my body is it's a temple? Is the, is the church, is the home of, it's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Temple of the Holy Spirit. So I try to believe I'm a church myself, inside me. I, I have just to behave. To behave as such. And do the right thing, yeah, you know. As a wealthy man, yes. when is it enough, Kirubi? Is it ever enough? You're a wealthy man. Well, I didn't know I'm wealthy. I, <laughs> I know I'm... <laughs> I'm able to maybe do what I want to do with, as far as money is concerned. Mm -hmm. But uh, the more you earn some status, the more you continue to work harder. I work harder now looking to succeed than I ever worked before. I have bigger, wider horizons now to try to achieve. And. Uh, it's, it's, maybe, maybe one day I'll say enough is enough, but... You don't see that? I tell so, you, yeah. I, I work every day. Every so what morning. keeps you up at night? Is it um, the fear that you might lose what you have to secure it? Is it to grow what you have? Or is it to keep what you have? What is it that keeps you up at night? I, 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 I get worried sometimes when I don't achieve the, the programs I set myself to achieve. But but really so failure. No, 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 failure. No, and but not to to lose anything as such. Because uh, if you are a wise investor, you invest in the right things. You invest in areas that you know and you believe will grow. And uh, failure is not in in the in the offing. Mm. But I always set myself new goals. Mm -hmm and I try to achieve them and this is my worry sometimes when I don't do everything that I intended to do. Mm. If I don't call the people I wanted to call, if I didn't appear where I should have appeared, these things do worry me. But also sometimes I worry my speed of doing things, my success, is it being hampered by other people? What, what, what else should I have done? What should I be doing? Yeah. To move even faster, my community of young people, you know, I, I talk to young people on social media, LinkedIn, and uh, sometimes they send me a lot of messages that I'm not able to handle. So, yes, yes. So those things do keep coming back to me, and uh, I keep worrying how can I help other people? to achieve what I have achieved. Mm. What is there for me that other people don't have? Right. And uh, I try to advise young people because I come from the world, the worst, the most poor in Kenya belongs to. Mm. And that is a lot of people in that uh, sphere. The, the rich kids don't worry, they look at their parents to hand over the, the wealth to them. 
are the poor people born out of very poor, humble homes. Those are the people I worry about. How can they achieve success? And okay. how, how can I interact with them? How can I help them mm. uh, taste quality of life? Yes. Talk to us about your journey. The five-year-old, ten-year-old Kirubi growing up. What were his aspirations? What were his dreams? What is it that... You know, five, got five you. Five year old, I don't think. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> At five, you're already thinking, when I grow up, I want to be this and the other. I, you know, those little... I, I don't know. I'm sure five year old, I was worrying, will I get some food to eat? What, will, what am I doing, you know? Uh, but what did you want to become when you were younger? Well, everybody, when you are young, you want to become a doctor or a pilot. Mm -hmm. those, those are the fancy things that uh, one sees in life and um, you dream about them. But uh, as I grew up a bit, uh, I lost my parents and uh, my life was just nothing but a struggle. At what age? What, was, how old were you then? Uh, I think I was about seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. So I had to struggle to try to survive. And I was the first of the boys in the family, so I had to try to make sure that all of us have something in life. And so, yeah. that is how early my life struggles began. Began. Because one would ask how then um, is you know, a child losing parents at seven, now later in life and now you have your kids, are you able to father when you are pretty much did not for the larger part of your life get that you know fatherhood in essence from biological parents so how is it you are able to center yourself and become the man you are today i think god guided me to to be the pillar the corner pillar of the family my brothers would never have gone to school mm -hmm. if i didn't become responsible and uh, if i did not behave and work hard i was very good in school all my life in school I'm always on the top three boys in classes, so I found help, I found support, and uh, people who sponsored me in the end sent, used to send me some money, and that money I used to use it to pay for my relatives' school fees. I went to very hard schools, I went to Western Kenya, your territory, I think you come from... No! <laughs> okay, it's so your Do I look? who comes from uh, Western Kenya. Okay. I, I had very tough life there, but okay. it matured me. It, it grew, grew me you. up. You know, when you have a bowl of, of beans and maize, and on top of the bowl, all you see is black, and you wonder, what is this black? Mm. And it's all the weevil. Yes. which had eaten all the beans and now they are boiled and they are floating mm. on top of the of the of the gravy believe you me then you look at your colleague next door and you yeah. see them enjoying the meal and uh, i spend my time trying to scoop them out and uh, eventually there is nothing after i scoop all this stuff out mm. it's a, it's a, it was a life experience so when you look at and remember your life then and what yes. you have now what do you say it has taken to get to this place because then somebody would have said impossible he cannot be the kirubi you are today so what do you think has brought you here from, from that kind of a background yeah you know coming from that black hole really to where i am is uh, you could call it magic miracle <laughs> magic. because <laughs> because i i really truly came from the very humble beginning mm. but uh, i believe if you work very hard I worked very hard. I worked very hard up to today. I don't know work. how to slow down. Uh, if one does not waste their life, mm. if you have a vision, mm -hmm. one thing I believe in is that you must chart your own vision. Okay. You must chart your life. If you don't know where you're going, you get not. You get nowhere. Mm. You must give yourself a destination, and this has always been my life.
Okay. I worked for companies for two years. I said, What I was your be, first job? I want to be the boss. I worked for Shell. And, uh, that was your first job? Yes, and I said, I want to be general manager of Shell. They told me, there are people who've been here for more than 10 years. They are not <laughs> general <laughs> managers. And I say, I don't have the 10 years. <laughs> That's why and what position I, I did you hold at that time? I was just a sales, a nice, fancy salesman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I move on. I, I, I look for another job with a better position. And I moved on. And uh, equally, the same thing happened. Next door, I try. Can I move a step up? They said, no. Young man, you have to take time. I said, but I'm good. I need to be better. And uh, I kept on doing this until in the end I said, enough is enough. I'm going to do my own business. And in your own world, you are free. You become what you want to be by your own actions. And uh, this, to me, if you can do business, that's where one should be. So you tried the employment, that did not pan out for you, decided to go it alone. In terms of capital, getting started, what was that like for you and also the, what inspired the area and direction you chose? To be honest, that's also an, a challenge. Where do you find capital? How do you start? I was just lucky. I went to my banks and I said, I need money to do one small thing. And the bank looked at me, looked at how sincere I was. <laughs> and my bank manager said, I trust you. How said, much money were you asking for? I can't remember the amount. It wasn't anything big. It to do what? Small. I wanted to buy a plot, okay. a plot of land, mm -hmm. which was very basic to me and very important. Mm -hmm. And the bank allowed me to. And they said, when you get the documents, please bring them to me. Mm. And I built a house on that little plot, and afterwards I, I rented it out, and I started making some money. Yes. And, you know, I lived in small, humble apartments all my life, mm -hmm. and I kept on buying some small properties. Once you've gone through the fast phase, it's very easy for banks to want to work with you. So you were buying yeah. and, and selling. selling. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that matured into what? Some good business. <laughs> Eventually, I got into industry manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, colleagues, a friend of mine who lived in one of my houses, got me to join them in some manufacturing business, mm -hmm. which I owned until recently when I heaved off half of it to Tiger Brands. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that's how I started Hako Industries. That's how it began. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, but once you succeed in one thing, you get calls, you get requests, people want to work with you. Mm. Up to now, I have people all around me sending me requests. They want to do business with me. Let's talk about manufacturing yes. and, you know, the sense you get in terms of the incentives to get into the industry because the, I was with Tabitha Karanja the other day and she talked about you know the challenges she has faced you know in manufacturing feeling that there have been very many things that have not been in place to support her have you felt the same in terms of the environment in Kenya uh, for the manufacturing industry to grow and flourish you know manufacturing in Kenya is for the for the tough guys you 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 can't do manufacturing, serious manufacturing, if you are not tough, what if you are not tough? willing to be tested. Okay. I believe you, the trouble with Kenya, Kenya is totally open to outside uh, imports. And uh, the laws themselves are not very conducive to support us sometimes. So, the government is doing as much as they can do. It's only President Kenyatta the other day who said 30% of purchases, I think it was 30 or 40% mm -hmm. of purchases must come from local industries. I saw him last night or the night before furious about uh, people buying a, a big pen at four, 300 bob instead of 10 bob in the in the street so again government purchases must be rational must buy 
Why don't they buy directly from industries? Mm. I'm the only one who manufactures that quality pen called big. I offer it to government at a fixed price. Why don't they buy from me? Why don't schools buy from me? Mm. They can get very affordable prices. So, so Kenya is not buying Kenya? I, and it is hard to make for Kenya, you're saying? You, you know, the problem we have in focusing, supporting local industries is the same problem we have in supporting our country called Kenya. We in the media industry don't see it as our duty to profile and to promote our nation. Believe you me, we cannot create jobs if we do not support and be proud mm. of what is local. I fought very hard against things called Mitumba when I was uh, chairman of industries. Mm. I was threatened by people with my life because I should never talk about Mitumba. I was told I don't wear Mitumba. What is my business? Yes. Now, textile industry is something that creates thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm live alone supporting the farmer. We do not in this nation called Kenya have to depend on second-hand clothing mm. or second-hand cars. We would be today like South Africa producing cars for Kenyans here. But we believe in all these junks from from all over the world. But also isn't it because of the question of cost? So what is it you feel that needs to happen, especially for the manufacturing industry, to, to level it out so that then Kenyans support because then they can afford, then it you is see, easier also for you to, pro to, to produce all of this stuff without necessarily importing you, material. You see, it's, and it's, a, it's a chicken and egg. Okay. If, if you, you have, have a big manufacturing plant with a lot of market share, mm -hmm. You can afford to lower your cost. But if you have no market, your production can only be very expensive. Okay. And therefore, what we have in this country is that we don't have the market for our local industries. Mm. If we have it, and the local industries are churning out a lot of uh, products, they will obviously reduce the prices. Mm. But we must support, initial support, to make them grow big. So the government yes. can do more in incentives? I, I think government can do more incentives. People need to also learn and to be patriotic, support their own local industries. Mm -hmm. This is where their children go and work. This is where the parents work. How don't you support it? How do you yeah, because go you look at market? Yeah buying underclothing, second-hand stuff that has been dumped and thrown away by other women in other countries. Because you also look at the question of, say, for example, tea, Kenya being the second largest exporter. So we grow this locally, we export it, then we buy it back more expensively. What, what is the problem there? The problem only look here at again it. is local value addition. We do not add value to our products, to our products. What? Yeah. we let it uh, go abroad and uh, people transform it and, uh, and then we buy it back and we buy it instead back of investing in infrastructure special. but you know the WTO rules uh, also do not help us very much because when I want to export my tea I can only export it tax free mm -hmm. if it's raw as soon as I package it there is a tariff, there is a barrier for it. So the Western world see themselves as the value addition territories. Mm. And they make sure that Africa remains forever a raw material producer. And I think this is an area we have to fight and fight very hard mm. so that our products, as long as they are the same but packaged or added value, they should have the same access to markets to market. internationally. We are very unfairly treated and made to remain the primitive producers of raw materials. Yes. yes. Let's talk about your company and um, the other day a bit of controversy, some call it scandal, that there was an allegation of cooking of books. 
um, you know, to, to paint a different picture in as far as profits uh, at Hako Tiger. What, what, what was that about? Well, I would like to dwell too much on it because uh, it happens with many companies. The, the management sometimes get over enthusiastic. To be honest, there was nothing, nothing that was missing from their business. It's only they sold forward. They were closing the year and they just invoiced goods to be shipped out in the future. And uh, basically for them, they achieved their target of their year, but the, room, the goods were still lying in the warehouses and uh, they, they did not tell anybody. If they only had told people, we would have understood, but they did not. And uh, therefore, we believe there was a uh, lack of transparency and uh, they, somebody had to pay the price for it. So, okay. so we, we, we come up with more strict rules, how you invoice and how you do not uh, invoice your customers mm. in the future. You invoice what is what is deliverable it? today and uh, not what and you hope you are, not what you you, you <laughs> will deliver in the yeah. next quarter it, it doesn't work you so, talk about transparency yeah, yeah, but yeah. let's also bring in corruption because as a country we've been having that in the uh, dominating the national conversation yeah. but in terms of private sector isn't it more rampant in your opinion corruption in private sector and there is not much being done there because for many people to get into business mm -hmm. they have to cut certain deals just to be able to, you know, get roped in. Wouldn't you say it's, it's also a big problem there? I would like to say that um, private sector supports corruption in the public sector. Simply because if I go to get something done in the government offices and I want it done today and I'm not ready to wait for tomorrow, Sometimes I will want to produce an inducement to make me achieve what I want today. If I'm found by a police officer driving and I'm making funny mistakes, a traffic offense, and I don't want to go to court, sometimes then you will find yourself offering bribe to the, to the policeman. Mm -hmm. I don't think a policeman ever demands it in a threatening manner mm. to give him a bribe. We, in the private sector, sometimes induce them to take the bribe. We induce the tax authorities to take a bribe so that we are not paying as much tax. So all these things are totally in partnership with the private sector. And private sector is not clean. If we say civil servants are not clean, it's the same with the private sector. And I think we need to create a code of conduct in the private sector to make sure that there are things we cannot do and we should never do them. But it is a wild challenge. If you look at the debate that was ranging some time back where the international manufacturing companies how they deal with their transparency in accounting for their taxes so that uh, they don't pay taxes uh, the, in, in the areas where they operate. These things are a big, big challenge and, uh, and I think we, we need to continue striving to make sure that uh, we achieve a balanced uh, way of behavior. Uh, and, and, and believe you me, Uhuru is a trying very hard but what surprises me I see the former premier every day talking about it but I ask where was he when he was the premier there was as much corruption going on as as much as it is today so it's, you don't throw a stone in a glass house because you are not there and and please don't don't hoodwink the people's eyes that you are clean and they are dirty. I think we are all very dirty. We need to clean this country called Kenya. We need to address the issues. There is, there is a lot to do.
Okay. We can't achieve overnight. Overnight. But Concerted over efforts. time, over yeah. time, I think we can achieve. I also see the media itself talking so much about this corruption. But the media itself is corrupt. So we, if you look at every sector, we in the media, we offer inducements to get business. Why don't we talk about it? All right, all right. We are paid money yeah. to highlight certain topics of certain people. It is all part of that. Uh, so it's active, one huge good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mess. We, we have a challenge as a nation, and okay. I think we need <laughs> we need to repent all of us. <laughs> all of us. Yes. Let's talk about privatization and whether you feel that's the right direction for Kenya, especially when you look at um, the transport, say for example, yeah. sector. Let's look at aviation. You're an investor, yeah. a shareholder with Kenya Airways. It is losing a lot of money. Um, is this the direction we should be taking as a country, or do we need to? perhaps re-look really at how and to the extent to which we privatize the various sectors? You see, the, the, the problem with uh, aviation is that uh, as a region, we don't operate as one international airline and then deal with the local uh, troubles as local small organizations. I think we need to bring back the spirit of East African Airways where Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, everybody is a shareholder of the international global airline. Right. Because simply we, we are not big enough. We are not big enough market to face the world. Mm. Out there, especially the Middle East, they have realized that by having international airlines that go to all these small African countries, they can bring Africans to go and shop in their own territories. They bring us to them rather than wait for, for our airlines to take us to them. Yes. And they support their own airlines. They give them big, big money, big funding. They give them tax rebates. They, they do everything everything mm. for their airlines to succeed. But in Africa, what, who supports Kenya Airways? Kenya Airways pays taxes in landing at the airport as any other foreign airline. It pays tax on its fuel. It pays financial costs where money is very expensive. To borrow money in Kenya is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Some of these airlines borrow money at 3%, 2%. So competing on the same level where your pricing is, uh, is the key, how many people will come with exactly. you because of your price, yes. it's, it, it, it's a big challenge. So and then, of course, uh, Kenya Airways went into this expensive program of uh, refinancing their their new aircraft mm. deals and mm. uh, therefore got itself into some big big debt and uh, without so you're concerned support, you're concerned my, that where mm, the carrier is standing now my s serious concern is that uh, kenya government needs to come and support the airline much more than it is without kenya airways bringing people to kenya we cannot grow business. Kenya, Nairobi must be a hub and we must develop the hub for the whole region. And therefore, this airline, we need to remove taxes, we need to remove anything that makes them not be competitive. So for you, you see it as an issue of more government support in terms of the environment to operate than there being an issue in terms of going private, Mumias, all of these other companies, because then we get into situations where they need bailouts. So for how long you know, one would wonder, uh, would these uh, bailouts be required? Well, Kenya Airways is totally different from case from Mumias. Mm. Mumias is a matter of dishonesty management. It's a really poor quality, competitive uh, ways. The farmers are producing cane which has very low yield. The management are doing all messy things with their finances. I don't think they are the same issues. Okay. What we need with Kenya Airways is a national career that has a job to bring people to Kenya. The tourism in this country must be developed. Mm. Tourism has a 
big, big impact in many sectors of the economy. And uh, equally, we need our leaders at the coast. Yes. I see everybody worrying about the problems at the coast, how people are closing hotels, how unsafe it is. Mm -hmm. The only two people I've never heard them talk about it is the governor and the senator involved with the coast. I've never had them worry about their coast area. Who is losing job? It's well, the coasty people. The Have you ever had the governor talk about the issues at the coast? Have you ever had your senator who appears in your, in your <laughs> media every Monday the talk senator. about it? Why doesn't he remove the big log in, the, in, in his eye before he talks about all many other irrelevant issues? All right. Let's um, focus. And I'd like you to invite me with that gentleman one day. Who has an show. Omar? Yes. You want to face yes. off yes. Yeah. next Anytime. Monday? Anytime. You're going to come? I will love to. Yeah, I'll you're going to wake up bright and early? I love to. Come. We're yes. on. Okay. Yeah? I'll, I'll be on. <laughs> okay. Let, let's. Um, the GES is coming up, yes. Global Entrepreneurship Summit, yes. next month. Um, first for you that the world is pretty much converging here on this particular subject. What does that say to you? I think what it means is that uh, it's an opportunity for Kenya to put its uh, best foot forward. It's an opportunity for us to show that we are a safe destination. Mm -hmm. It's a, an opportunity for us to show that there are a lot of investments going on in this region, in this country. As you know, Obama did come up to Tanzania last time and never made it to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a president, he is coming this time. He is uh, giving us the honor and to visit us, and yes. we very much welcome him. And we hope with all the delegations that will come with him, mm. Kenya will be playing the host and will show and put the best foot forward. And I do hope that the media will start going into details of the opportunities that are available in the counties. Yes. Opportunities that are available within the people, the quality of the people here, the safety of manufacturing that one can do. Mm -hmm. And to show that Kenya is an obvious leader in the region. This country is rated as one of the fastest leading in Africa. And in the world, growing. And in the world. Yes. And I, I, I believe it's only Kenyans that don't believe in it themselves. So if we believe in it, let's take a break for a while and talk about the good opportunities that exist in Kenya. What do you tell someone who'd like to invest in Kenya? What's the... I, I think there is a lot Landscape. of opportunity in manufacturing, in uh, in energy sector, in uh, infrastructure, in uh, consumer goods, mm -hmm. and th this is a region of over 200 million people. If you take the whole region, we have a lot of people in Uganda, in Rwanda, in Congo, in uh, Southern Sudan, in mm -hmm. Tanzania, and and. We are all part of the Comesa region, and uh, I think we can be the African hub manufacturing for, for the region. So, there is a big opportunity. I know GE is here, General Motors is here, uh, Coca-Cola is doing big business here, and I think we are going to demonstrate. I'm chairman of Coca-Cola businesses here, mm -hmm. and we're going to demonstrate that this is the region that more and more people should come and they invest in us. Mm. But nobody will come if we ourselves don't believe in what we have. In what you have. Yes. And you have vast business interests. Talk to us about where it is your footprint, your mark is, because you're talking media, there's aviation, you name it. Talk I'm, to I'm, us, break I'm it down. I mean, so many things. Break it Sometimes down. Sometimes it's difficult to remember everything. <laughs> Uh, right now we are working on energy, we are in uh, the Rift Valley working in geothermal. We want to produce 140 megawatts of power. We are in uh, Lamu to produce another 1000 megawatts of power. 
I'm chairman of all these companies. I'm in manufacturing of pharmaceuticals with the biochemicals. Mm -hmm. I'm a manufacturer of uh, products in Hako Industries, which you mentioned. We yes. make, we employ about 800 people. We manufacture a lot of stuff over there. I am in construction. We are developers. We are developing the largest uh, mall in. East Central Africa, I would say, maybe South Africa have something bigger than that. Mm -hmm. We we doing many many things. We want to do education. I'm a coffee farmer, poor coffee farmer. You Never are. make money, but uh, you're a DJ. I'm, I'm, uh, I have my music. <laughs> <laughs> Love for music. Uh, well, you know, I, I I stay in radio simply because. All the youth are there, and uh, I want to talk to them. I never want to feel that I've lost my friends. And we, we are in many areas. I, so, I'm, yeah. part of, I'm part of DHL. Uh, I'm, I'm in Coca-Cola business. I'm so what informs where Chris Kirubi invests, puts his money and his time? What informs this, you know, business as you've mentioned and ventures? I have become very mechanical almost. I, 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 I operate in one day, I'll run, I'll work, I'll touch about 10 or 20 companies of ours. I will sit in different meetings, uh, sometimes two meetings happening at almost at the same time. I work until I collapse. I go to bed at 10, 11 o'clock, I collapse. So I, how effective then are you if you're stretched almost too I, thin? Then how I, is it you will am, give the best of you thin. to each of I this? I have, have very good management. I make sure we have very high quality management. Like now we just bought a small bank called KREP. We're going to turn it around. We're going to make it a big bank. You know, that's yes. my dream. Yes. I, I, I've donated my daughter to sit in that board. And, and, and believe you me, these are things we believe in, that we make things happen. And uh, we're looking forward to create wealth for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we have a public quoted company, uh, I, I believe working hard doesn't doesn't hurt but it pays yeah yeah have you achieved what you sought out to achieve what you've always wanted do you I'm feel just like in the beginning of it now yes i would like to employ double the number of people i employ today i i i, I like to create more jobs at two rivers we are employing on daily basis about 1,200 people mm. who are getting their daily bread. Those and guys we, yeah. who are sitting on the roadside up at, uh, at, uh, at uh, that area and, and, and they're robbing other people. Today they are all working. Yes. So if I can double those numbers, I'll be very happy. And we'll go have a look at, at some of what you're doing there. But before we do, you were recently knighted by the French. First, explain to us what this is all about, being knighted, its significance. And now when you go to France, what that means? I was very surpr pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. The French government came up and uh, did give me this uh, honor, which uh, is the highest honor that they can give to any foreign dignitary or even their own people, although they have different names, they call them. I think to be recognized by a foreign country and given such a position, it means you are doing something good that the world is noticing. Yes. And I just hope that my own country will one of these days notice what I'm doing. Yes. So you feel like Kenya does not appreciate or recognize, I, appreciate. I, I was given Dr. an Kiru. EBS by President Moy some time back, which I thank him for it because um, it is very early. It was very early on in my life, yes. and uh, he gave me a very, a very major title. Mm -hmm. uh, EBS is quite something. But I've had the Kibaki regime, and now I have the Uhuru regime, and maybe because I'm a Kikuyu. They don't feel comfortable maybe to honoring one of their own in case they are accused of something. But you know, the truth should never be hidden and hurt, really.
Yeah. But it is embarrassing if a foreign government can give on giving your accolades in your own country where you are domiciled and you work and you create what you create. Well, the Bible says uh, a prophet is never appreciated at home, well, so perhaps, I, you know. May, 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 I hope they don't read that <laughs> part of the Bible. <laughs> they need to read other parts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, do you have a mentor? Someone you look up mm. to? I look to many people in the world, uh, Richard Branson and many other guys uh, who have made the world what it is today. I, uh, I, 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 look, I look up to, to them. I sit, I sit in the board of Harvard Business School and uh, I interact with some very, very senior people. Don't forget Bill Gates went to that school. Uh, Barack Obama went to that school too. Mm -hmm. So there are many people who went through Harvard that uh, I personally look up to and uh, track what they are doing. And I just hope that one day I could achieve a tenth of what these people have, have yeah, done. Yeah, have really. done. Yeah, they, 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 it's always important somebody to look up to somebody who has achieved something. Mm. And I think this is the biggest problem we have in Africa. We don't have many people that people look up to and uh, they look at politicians. Uh, the young people see, think politicians are everything. But a politician is up for five years, the next and that's five it. years it disappears. So yeah. let me take you back to G. Yes, yeah. if um, next month during the summit you are yeah. given three minutes to address, you know, the gathering where Obama is and all of these leaders, and the world is pretty much watching yeah. on business, what would you say? I'll just tell them, good morning, guys. Welcome to Kenya. This is paradise. This is a country of opportunity, and everybody should look at what we have in this country. Yeah. I will show what I am doing myself and, uh, and uh, tell them, smell the coffee. This is the region. This is the country. We are the hub for East Africa, and we are safe. And please don't read newspapers. Newspapers don't tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Come and talk to the people who are already invested here. Yes. You have GE, you have General Motors, you have Coca-Cola. These are your peers, these are your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Talk to them, find out, and welcome home. Okay, excellent. So we'll wrap up with some quick fire questions. Yeah. So briefly, what's your favorite food? Nyama choma. <laughs> Nyama choma. What's your favorite color? Red. <laughs> what's your favorite car? Mercedes. Which Mercedes? Which class? I'm looking to buying a G, G, G wagon. A <laughs> G wagon. What's the best book you've ever read that you enjoyed the most or impacted your life? Harold Robbins. Harold Robbins. Yes. Cash or checkbook? Cash Preference. Is, cash is king. <laughs> Lake or ocean? Ocean. Dog or cat? Cat. <laughs> oh my God! Thank it's, you. It's so peaceful. It's so nice. It's so you can handle a cat. <laughs> you can handle a cat. Yeah, okay. The dog can be vicious. Sometimes. Can be vicious. Mm. So you work out. You you keep healthy. You you watch yes. what you eat. Yeah. Yeah. I eat vegetables. I try to live healthy, you know. I, I read a lot about health issues, uh, okay. healthy foods, vitamins, and yes. all these the, the things you can do to make your life li live longer and better. And yes. I keep away from hospitals. I, I, I'm very lucky, uh, touch wood. I, I, I hardly ever go to hospitals. So, this is a massive project you have here. Talk to me about it. This is impressive. We believe there'll, there'll be about 3,000 to 5,000 people over the weekend visiting this place. So, so, so and how many acres is this sitting? The mall is sitting on nine and a half acres mm -hmm. covered space, but the total area, acreage of the whole area is right. uh, 100 acres. 
Wow. Over 100 acres. So we believe the mall is taking one third of the space. We're going to have hotels, we're going to have offices. These offices, these tower wings are offices. Yeah. We have over there the, the, the banking sector. All wow. these are going to be banks. There are about 10 banks coming here, establishing here. So your bank will be here. You don't have to go to anywhere go else. And you're saying already 60% <coughs> of the shops have been taken up. They've been taken up even without one advertisement. So who's involved in this? Yourself, who else? It's us, uh, Centum Group and, uh, and uh, the, the Chinese partners who are also developers here. And yes. uh, believe you me, it is uh, a very, very big project. And on a daily basis, you have how many people working here? On a daily basis, we employ over 1,200 young people. Mm -hmm. This is beside the foreign workers right. who are working and earning their daily bread here. So why yes. the name Two Rivers? Two Rivers is because we have two rivers surrounding us. Okay. On that side we have a river mm -hmm. and on this side we have another small river. <laughs> so we took the name, we are in the middle of two rivers. It's a, it's a genuine naming and uh, we hope people will respect that word. And with such a huge mall, security must be a nightmare. How do you assure Kenyans and other people who will be coming here either to shop, to enjoy themselves of their security? Actually, we are more sensitive about security than anybody else. And uh, in our planning, in our development, we are spending about $10 million on developing security gadgets. We are doing Google Analytics. We can pick anybody walking into the mall and follow them all through where they come and where they go. We are using more cameras and that nearly 50% of all the national cameras you are putting up in Kenya today, we are doing about 50%, nearly 60% of that within the mall. the mall itself. All right, yeah. Dr. Kirubi, yeah. thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. We yeah. wish you the best. Yeah. We'll be watching and Please. seeing all of the work that you're doing. Just have a look, thank see you what very you're much. doing, and yeah. uh, let people know that uh, Kenya has big opportunities, and uh, we welcome our visitors to come and partner with us. We still have some part of the land undeveloped, and we're going to develop it. Yes. So we welcome investors.